Welcome to Djobnik, your command post for clarity and perspective. My name is David Menser and I'm an Israeli government spokesman. Today is Tuesday, the 9th of April 2024. Day 186 of the October 7th war, 186 days on, our determination to achieve our war aims remains focused. To bring home our hostages, 133 of them, mums, dads, kids, to destroy Hamas. We are destroying Hamas. Hamas, uh, the IDF has taken out 19, almost 20 Hamas battalions, destroyed 13,000 terrorists, targeted and killed with a similar number injured, taken off the battlefield, apprehended. That's at least 26,000 terrorists off the battlefield. But this victory requires the final four terrorist battalions in Rafah. We know that they're there, and the Prime Minister has made clear that a date has been identified. And with all this, Gaza will never again be a threat to us. I want to deal with how this conflict is being spoken about head on. I want to set the record straight on a number of important issues. To those that parrot the genocide libel, it really is a, a red line. They embrace the Hamas talking points and ignore the leading military experts in urban warfare who could not be clearer. Israel has set the new gold standard for urban warfare. Of course, Every civilian casualty is a tragedy, but these experts have made clear we have set the new gold standard for urban warfare. And if you wouldn't take Al-Qaeda or ISIS figures on face value, then why on earth would you take Hamas's? And to those that parrot the destruction and Gazans returning to a destroyed Khan Yunis, it's not due to how Israel fights this war, it's due to how Hamas fights this war. Human shields and using the landscape within and under the city to hide and attack. And of course, the starvation libel parroted so liberally. Yesterday alone, enough food went into Gaza to feed every single person there. The UN fails to distribute it and Hamas steals it. Just yesterday, these are the facts, just yesterday, 419 aid trucks went in, the highest number of aid trucks to enter Gaza in any one day since the start of the war. That's 741 humanitarian trucks in the last two days alone. The, again, these are facts. Of those, a mere 267 trucks were distributed by the United Nations. We are getting the aid in, but the UN is unfortunately failing Gazans with chaotic distribution. Look, 97 trucks could fit comfortably on a playing field in a football st stadium. That's seven football, football stadiums full of aid in two days alone, all delivered safely into Gaza. This is unprecedented. Hamas creates an image of a, humanit of a humanitarian crisis. Where there is hunger in Gaza, it is hunger orchestrated by Hamas. These are the images they create. These are the images they want you to see. I can guarantee three things. Firstly, no one in Hamas is hungry when we've apprehended them. There's been no start sign of hunger whatsoever. Number two, Hamas steals the aid. Just watch the Reuters live stream of aid going in and you'll see Hamas gunmen sitting on top of those trucks. And number three, Hamas wants to maximize the suffering of ordinary Gazans. Why? To stop the war and to save their own skins. Now I want to update you on the hostage negotiations. Of course, we will not be giving a running commentary just to say that the Prime Minister last night received a detailed report, a detailed report on the talks in Cairo. Our hostages are an open wound in Israeli society. All of us here are focused constantly on securing their release. And finally, uh, in Gaza, the senior Hamas rocket specialist, Khatem Al-Ameri, Al we located him, he was identified, he's fired his last rocket at Israel. We did this for Israel, of course, but we also did it for Gazans too, because we're liberating 
Gaza from Hamas. And also because 20% of the Hamas rockets fired from Gaza actually land back inside Gaza. So that brings us to the end of today's briefing. I will now take your questions uh, in the chat. Please add your news outlet. Thank you very much. First question, Joel Polak, Breitbart News. Can you confirm reports that Israel is buying 40,000 tents ahead of a possible Rafah operation? And is Israel worried about ammunition supplies if the United States restricts aid? On the first question uh, of tents, Joel, thank you for the question. Uh, just to say, I've, we've all seen those uh, reports, and uh, I can say that we are preparing shelters. That's uh, for sure, that that's something I can say. Uh, that's all I can add to this particular report. On the question of arms uh, and uh, the US support, uh, the Prime Minister has quoted Winston Churchill when Churchill said to uh, FDR, to President Roosevelt, he said, give us the tools to finish the job. And we say the same thing in the words of the Prime Minister, give us the tools to finish the job. Our victory is your victory. Iran, who is behind this uh, conflict, is the enemy of Israel. But of course, they are the enemy of the US and the, all of the free world. And when I say Iran, I mean the regime in Iran. I don't mean the people of Iran. They oppress their own people and they're trying to keep their, their hold on power by uh, threatening us, but it won't work. Next question, please. Question from Hannah Julian, the Jewish press. Turkey today halted exports to Israel of many products, including the export of aviation fuel. What is Israel's response to this move? Does Israel have other sources from which to obtain aviation fuel? And if so, can you reveal who those exporters are? Uh, Hannah, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, so on Turkey, our foreign minister, Yisrael Katz, uh, said, and that was released just this morning, you can check it out, uh, that Erdogan, unfortunately, is once again sacrificing the economic interests of the people of Turkey uh, for his support of Hamas, the murderers uh, in Gaza who raped, murdered and desecrated the bodies of women, girls, adults and burned children alive. We've made it quite clear that Israel will not give in to violence and extortion and we will not condone the one-sided violation of the trade agreements and we will take parallel measures against Turkey which will harm the Turkish economy. Now the foreign minister said that he's ordered the preparation of another list of products that Israel will, uh, for Israel to prevent Turkey from exporting. And in addition, the foreign minister has instructed the uh, Israeli foreign ministry officials to contact countries and organizations uh, in the United States to stop investments in Turkey and to prevent the import of products from Turkey and to our friends in the American Congress to examine the violation of the boycott laws and impose sanctions on Turkey accordingly. So that's quite clear from Israel's foreign minister. Thank you, Hannah. Next question, please. Question from Frederick Egger for Interplanetary TV. Videos have been circulating on social media showing how mass members or civilian Gazans throwing away in bins hundreds of pre-cooked meals instead of being distributed as hu humanitarian aid for free. The IDF found humanitarian aid food supplies and meant to supply the needy sold on the black market at high prices. Is Israel's government aware and can they confirm it? And what can it do about it? Thank you. Thank you very much, Fred, for that uh, question. Yes, of course, we've seen those reports. Uh, no one who's seen those reports can be uh, anything but shocked, especially with uh, Israel being maligned so often with this trope uh, of Israel being maligned with uh, this idea of uh, famine and shortages, so shortages uh, in Hamas. Look, before this war, there were 70 food trucks a month, a day, excuse me, 70 food trucks a day going into Gaza. Uh, as I've made clear, more than 400, more than 400 trucks, 421 uh, from my briefing just now, have gone in uh, over the last day, more than 700 over the last two days. There is food going into Gaza. The UN, unfortunately, are hopelessly inefficient in distributing it. And we know, of course, that Hamas steals much of the aid. We've seen videos and reports uh, uh, of bustling markets 
um, in Gaza, both north and south. You know, where there is hunger in Gaza, it is hunger orchestrated by Hamas. It, these are the, this is a, just another tool of warfare, oppressing their own people to try and put international pressure on Israel. But the game's up, Hamas. Much of the world are starting to see through this ruse and uh, the pictures can't lie any, any longer. We are getting food into Gaza. We're getting as much as we possibly can. And um, you can be sure of this, that the aim of this war is not only to stop Hamas oppressing the people of Israel, but it's also to free Gaza from Hamas. Next question, please. Question from David Clement from the News Forum. The UN Security Council has put Palestinian statehood to the committee. Does the PM have a comment about the prospect of UN recognizing Palestinian statehood? So, David, thank you very much uh, for that uh, pertinent question. Look, if there is any sense in this world that a reward for the October 7th massacre, when this country was brutally broken into by the army of, Haras, of Hamas, which raped and pillaged and desecrated uh, uh, my people. If the reward for that outrageous action is a Palestinian state, it will be an encouragement to every single terrorist organization in the entire world to copy and paste. Outrageous terrorist actions will lead to their demands being accepted. It cannot be the case that the reward for the October 7th massacre is a Palestinian state. It cannot be the case, and we will not accept it. Next question, please. Final question, second question from Hannah Julian, the Jewish press. There were reports that Hamas said during talks that it is not possible to return 40 living hostages to Israel. Is the report true? And if so, why would Hamas say so? So obviously I can't uh, comment on those reports. I can only tell you that there are 133 families of hostages uh, who wait every single moment uh, for their loved ones to return home. You know, we are approaching the festival, the Jewish festival of Passover, which recognizes uh, the, the freedom of the children of Israel from oppression. It's a festival of freedom. This would be the perfect time to get those people home. For six months, they have languished in the Hamas terror dungeons, an absolute travesty of justice, an absolute uh, terrible, terrible war crime. They must come home, and they must come home now. And you can be sure that this government is razor-focused on getting these people home as soon as we possibly can. Thank well, you. So, uh, our following, we've got one more question, I think. Jim Williams, Zenger International News Service, Washington, D.C. Yesterday, Jake Sullivan told the press that there would be no Palestinian state without an agreement with Israel. Is that how the Prime Minister understands it? Um, thank you, Jay. Uh, thank you. I'm not sure I really uh, understand your question. Um, any, I've made my points about um, rewarding October the 7th with a Palestinian state, that would be uh, obscene, absolutely obscene. Uh, the Prime Minister has made uh, the government's view very, very clear, and that is uh, um, Palestinians should be able to rule themselves without the power to harm us. Uh, that's been quite clear, and I think there's consensus across the country uh, for that as well. But the idea of creating uh, a terrorist state on our borders would be a disaster as things stand right now. So I think that was the last question. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you very much for joining us today. And we'll have another briefing at the same time tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dejavnik signing off.